My mother-in-law, Nora, was always a very active and practical woman. She ran a bed and breakfast in Alapool. She bred golden retrievers, a type of dogs, and kept a very neat house and large garden till the very end of her life. When I first visited there, I would have loved to snuggle up in one of her settees or easy chairs with my book and just read. But somehow, that wasn't possible. It made me feel just too guilty, as if I was being lazy or unhelpful. This was not not necessarily her fault, as it was reflecting the way I was brought up. On the one hand, I had learned to be helpful and supportive of somebody doing, house, doing all the housework, and on the other, I did have in my mind the wish to be not like the busy Ma- Martha, as Nora was behaving. I rather wanted to be like Mary and study theology. So I, I was cross instead, which wasn't much good either. You will remember stories and incidents like this in your own life. When somebody seems to be doing all the hard work of keeping house, cooking and cleaning, serving meals, and doing not much else, or doing other things, less seen maybe. If this is the case, and chores are not shared out equally amongst the family, resentments can start to build up, and squabbles happen within the family. And it's maybe time for a family conference how to sit down together and discuss how best to organize family life and sharing out the chores equally. And this is what happened in our gospel story today. It was a family conference, but of God's family. One member of the family is saying honestly to another that they are not happy. Mary, sitting at Jesus' feet, was overhearing all this, of course. But Jesus, rather than sending Mary into the kitchen to help her sister, affirms Mary's choice as we have heard. She has chosen the better part, and it will not taken away from her. So, is Jesus saying that Martha has chosen the worst part? For long enough, medieval theology in particular interpreted the story in this fashion. It announced that the active life, the vita activa, was of lesser importance than the contemplative life, the vita contemplativa. Doesn't it sound more fancy in Latin? Ever since Augustus, Martha was seen to be useful, but somewhat limited, while Mary is seen as spiritual, refined, and more saintly. In contrast, in our time, we are encouraged to be busy the whole time if we want to be useful citizens. Connected and interconnected by modern technology within the nth degree, even on our holidays. Our society lives like Martha, distracted by our many tasks and is proud of it. And yet, the troubles do not seem to become less and many live with a deep sense of worry and even fear, whether it is about the state of politics, climate change, or the moral and ethical cohesion of societies. And the young ones and the older ones ask, where is God? Who will lead us? The prophet Amos in our Old Testament story today, today, tells us of in his fourth vision of a basket of summer fruit. The Hebrew word for summer fruit sounds like the Hebrew word for the end. The word play, of course, is lost in translation. In the New English Bible, the translators attempted a, a, a more a a hint towards this by translating more freely, the time is ripe for my people Israel. Never again shall I pardon them. After the first two visions Amos had had, 
Amos asked God for mercy for the people of Israel. But when he sees his third and fourth vision, the third being the one about the plumb line and the fourth today about the summer fruit, Amos seems to have lost hope that Israel might ever change its way and stop heading down on the road to self-destruction. And he utters terrifying words of judgment. Amos finishes by threatening a famine, not an ordinary famine of lack of food or water, but a famine for the word of God. And many since felt and feel God being far away. They feel their hunger for guidance, spiritual and moral direction. Who or what is God? We know for certain that God is not a place or item of limited, or of, of magic powers. We know for certain that God is not an institution like the church or any sort of temple. Instead, we dare gather here Sunday by Sunday or whenever we can, like Mary, who found God through listening to Jesus of Nazareth and found, surprisingly probably, that the famine for the word of God had come to an end. Jesus must have seemed to Mary like a revolutionary when he refused to yield to the norms of the time where women were most certainly in the kitchen. Time and again, Jesus speaks to women and includes them in his healing and teaching work. Mary has chosen the better part. He refuses her her choice of learning from him. So she's sitting at his feet, behaving like a pupil, like a disciple, and her listening shows that she has accepted him as a prophet. But this does not mean that Jesus condemns Martha and the active parts of living. Jesus does not place contemplation above activity. On the contrary, this story comes at the end of Luke chapter 10, where Jesus is most certainly busying his disciples. At the beginning of the chapter, we've heard him send out 70 disciples, like lambs amongst wolves, to preach the nearness of the kingdom of God. Then we heard the discussion with someone about the will of God. What does God want us to do? And Jesus says, love God and love your neighbor, and then defines what neighbor means in a radical way. and in an active way too. And today we have here two sisters debating whether it is like time to listen or to act, to be a maker or a dreamer. Nora, my mother-in-law, had by her sink a small sign which read, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. Is that not true? Would it often not be so much better if we stopped before acting, to think, to pray? And once my mother, who probably wanted to give me some more good advice, sent a Russian proverb which said, mix doing with doing nothing and you won't go mad. One of the best gifts of, to the world by Israel is the fourth commandment, observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Before trade unions, this was often the only higher authority protecting the strength of hard-pressed workers. Why, though, do we have the tendency to think it clever to work every minute God gives us? But what Mary is doing is not simply resting. She is listening to Jesus, who Colossians reminds us is the invisible image of God himself. Colossians uses 
probably uses a song which was sung by the early Christian community, praising Christ as the cosmic, as part of God and the, uh, at the beginning of creation. The hymn is praising Christ as the cosmic Christ. Why is this important? Because God is not just an external idea or a, an idea of perfection, but it means that we believe through Christ in a God who brings all reality together, who reconciles the material with the spiritual. We meet God in this world where we can, the only place where we can meet God because we are bound to this world. And God sends us, once we are inspired by him, on a mission. So far from removing us from reality, God sends us straight back into it. Have you heard people talk of the cycle of grace and the cycle of works? The cycle of works means that we start out by trying to achieve things, to become significant. And then we can afford sustenance and other things and be accepted by our peers. The cycle of grace, in, though, turns all this around. We start by being accepted by God and receiving sustenance from him which then will allow us to be persons of significance and help us achieve things. Mary is listening to Jesus and is accepted by him. And she had accepted him too. She, at that point in the story, is receiving sustenance from him in his teaching. Martha, further on on the cycle of grace, is doing a significant job catering for Jesus and his entourage. She was on the way to achieve a good day for kingdom building. At another point in time, and maybe not before long, Martha, Martha would have needed to stop and recharge her batteries physically and spiritually. And after listening, Mary, too, will become active. Her listening to Jesus will lead Mary into action. The theologian Dorothy Zölle said, Real contemplation gives rise to just actions. Theory and praxis are in an indissoluble connection. So do the brave thing to admit your needs and take them like Mary to Jesus our Lord. He will send you out again to do the chores when the time has come, but he will send you refreshed and advised by love. Allow me to finish with an affirmation of faith by Dorothy Mc Ray McMahon. There is a God at whose feet we may sit, and gathered there is love. There is a quiet space for safe encounters and wiser understanding for our learning, a robe for the touching of our hand to share healing grace from the body of Christ. There is a place near to feet that have walked our dusty ways and moved in courage among our complexities felt our painful choices at the crossroads, turned themselves reluctantly towards our harder paths and formed footsteps ahead of us towards a truer, braver, many-colored life. We will sit at the feet of our God. Amen.